Welcome to the Draw Shops Get Genius Podcast, where we talk to today's business influencers to pick their brain and pull out their genius. It's time to get genius. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Get Genius episode. Today, my guest is Hans Finzel, and he is a successful author, speaker, teacher, and important to note, leader, because that's what we are going to be talking about. He is a leader among leaders, and we are talking about leadership today. He's the president of HD Leaders. He has trained leaders internationally on five continents. He's served for 20 years as president and CEO of International Nonprofit World Venture with a staff of 650 in 70 countries worldwide. So he knows a bit about being a leader. Um, We talk about the things that make help make you a really strong leader that people actually relate to and want to be led by. Um, And we also talk about some of the mistakes. Actually, we talk about a lot of the mistakes that leaders make, the top mistakes that leaders make. Hopefully you don't find yourself in there, but if you do, it's okay. You can learn how to undo that. Um, He's got multi multi best-selling books all about leadership and I think he has them actually translated into all different kinds of languages because they are that popular. But um, he's a great guy. He has um, an incredible history with this and stories, and he himself has made his own mistakes as a leader. So he he knows what he's talking about. So if you are ever struggling with, hmm, is that the way I should have handled that situation with my employees or with my team or whatever position you are in? You are probably somehow either being led or being a leader yourself. We've all experienced that. So you're going to get some insight on what to do, what not to do, and how to get the most out of what you are doing. Enjoy. Hello, Hans, and welcome to the Get Genius Show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Summer. Great to be with you today. Well, I'm really excited to talk to you about a really important topic. Um, we're going to talk a lot about leadership today, and I, I think that you've got some amazing insights to um, how to be great, mistakes that we make, and um, some really good tricks and tools and tips and all that good stuff to um, help us as entrepreneurs be better leaders. So this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, everybody is affected by leaders all the time, wherever you work. So it's a, it is an important topic. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, sometimes people maybe don't actually realize who they're being a leader to. Um, yeah, that's true. That's very true. So before I define, we, Oh, go you ahead. Probably know I def- I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself here. I was just saying that I define leadership by just one simple word, the word influence. And so anytime you influence anybody toward any kind of actions, good or bad, you're leading them. And that's why you were just saying, sometimes we don't even know who we're leading. It's so true. It's so true. And that comes, you know, with, with all the different hats that we wear in in our lives, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are the owner or uh, of your company or founder. Uh, it's oftentimes within your family or within your teams. So I'm I'm glad we're going to be covering all of that today. Um, I'd like to hear first a little bit of background on you and how this became a so important to you to help others become great leaders. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm uh, I've been around for a while. <laughs> uh, I'm in my 60s. I will confess. So I've had a 30 year career and. Uh, but early in my career as a young man, uh, I became real interested in the topic of leadership because I worked for a terrible boss. I mean, a guy who was a gentleman who recruited me to work with him. My wife and I actually moved to Europe to join the team. And a uh, great visionary, loved the vision, totally bought into the vision. But it wasn't long after I got there that uh, – and he asked me to help – build this um, organization over there kind of as a COO and he would be the CEO. But like a lot of visionary founders, I quickly realized he was a control freak (laughs) and tough to work with. And some of the smartest people in the world and the great inventors and visionaries of our time, like Stephen Jobs, 
can be really hard to work for, you know? And, and so, uh, that's when I got interested in leadership because I, I eventually quit that, uh, position and moved back to the United States because I just, out of total lack of respect, you know, if you lose respect for your leadership, you might as well move on because it's very hard to get it back once you've lost it, once the glass is broken. And so we left, it was a hugely disappointing experience in our lives. And, and so I just said to myself, all right, if I ever become a leader, I'm going <laughs> to, I don't want to be that kind of a leader. I'm going to study leadership. I'm going to obsess on understanding how to be a good leader. And that's how my journey began. So did you yourself make mistakes being a leader? Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. So fast forward a few years after that, when I turned 40, I became a CEO of a big international nonprofit and uh, so then I was the leader and for 20 years, I, I ran that global operation and, oh yes, you know, my most popular book summer is called the top 10 mistakes leaders make yeah. <laughs> and people always ask me, well, have you made all those mistakes? <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> I've made a hundred really good mistakes. I just put the top 10 in the book. <laughs> Can you tell <laughs> oh, us what I, some of I those made are? So many and that's kind of how we learn, isn't it? By mistakes. Oh, for sure. Can you share with us some of those mistakes? Because I myself am like, I, I need to know, have I done those? I mean, we know the mistakes that we've made, but sometimes we don't know mistakes that we're making. Well, one of the biggest is uh, what I call dictatorship and decision making, where you you are a control freak and you don't uh, you don't know how to delegate well. Uh, a parallel concept to dictatorship of, in decision making is what I call dirty delegation. <laughs> and, and a lot of people don't know how to delegate cleanly. What I mean by dirty is the opposite of clean. Clean delegation is you give somebody a responsibility and you give them the authority for that responsibility. You give them some power. You give away some of your power to them and they feel like they have a contribution to make and they have some ownership of the job, of the responsibility, of the task. And uh, so that's one of the biggest mistakes leaders make is they control, they micromanage, and they don't know how to delegate well. It's, to me, I love the topic of delegation because it's another word for mentoring. It's another word for developing people. And I think one of the biggest jobs of a leader is to develop other leaders. But people who are insecure don't want to do that. Yeah, that is so true. Let's talk about delegation because I'm a huge fan as well. How can you how can you successfully do that? I always say, imagine uh, the difference between renting an apartment and owning a house. You've probably done both. Yes, I've done both. <laughs> and when you rent an apartment, you don't really take care of it because it's not yours. But as soon as you buy your first home. You know, my kids are now buying their first homes and I go and I help them get them all fixed up. And you feel like you're making an investment and you own this thing, even though you co-own it with the bank. Right. But uh, that's kind of the way people want to feel. Uh, here's the four questions every follower asks. And these are the most important questions about delegation. A follower or somebody on your team, an employee whoever you're delegating to asks these four questions. What am I supposed to do? Will you let me do it? Will you help me when I need it? And will you tell me how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Those are the four questions every follower asks. And, you know, what am I supposed to do? The first question is, you know, be clear on the assignment. You know, if, if you're not fuzz, if you're fuzzy on what you really want them to do, then they don't really know what to do. Yeah. So it's important to be clear up front, you know, okay, we need a new website or we need a new page on our website or we need to, I need you to balance, the, I need you to get our budget prepared for next year by such and such a date, whatever, you know, clear, uh, what am I supposed to do now? Will you let me do it? That's the key there. That's the clean delegation. In other words, that he they want to know, am I going to have some ownership? So when it's all over, I'm going to have some pride of ownership. Like I actually made a contribution to the cause. You know, I, I'm not just a worker bee. I actually own this job. People love to own responsibility and to be able to, when they're all done, to get a pat on the back and said, way to go. Good job. Exactly. So that's, all those are really important pieces of good delegation. 
what are some other mistakes that that you have you have made and maybe you could tell us you know what happened as a result of that mistake and then shifting that and changing the way you know whatever that mistake was and then what the result of that was yeah the whole thing um about delegation let me just tell you one big mistake i made i had a we wanted to do a big advertising campaign and i i had a communications director and so i sat down with him i said i want you to come up with a concept for this advertising campaign okay all right Turned him loose. <laughs> About a week <laughs> later, this outside company contacted me and um, wanted to bid for our advertising dollars. And and uh, they said, you know, for no cost, we'll we'll come up with an idea for you. We'll spin you a, you know, we'll per- we'll present you as. A concept, and and about a week later, they brought me the concept. I loved it, and I decided I'm going to go with this company. Uh, <laughs> guess what? I never told my internal guy that he was competing with an external company. Oh, and so that was a huge mistake. And then one day he asked me, "Hey, what about the? I'm ready to show you all my stuff that I came up with." And I said, "Oh, I've decided to go in a different direction." Ouch. (laughs) Absolutely demoralized. So that's really bad delegation when you give somebody something to do, but they don't really have any power and authority and they're not really going to be in on the decision. So that's another big mistake, Summer, that I've made is hire the wrong people. Yeah. You ever done that? Absolutely. And I was just talking about this with um, another another guest. It's it's so true when you when you hire the wrong people and especially if you keep them on too long <laughs> because of. You oh, know, yeah. And human nature, I'm, I'm kind of a rescuer. So when people need to be fired, I want to give them another chance and right. another chance. I'm terminally nice. You know, I don't want to be mean, but I've learned with every case that I fired somebody, the sooner, the better. Uh, and the hardest ones to fire are the people that you hired, not the people you inherit. Right. If you go into a new job, um, my one of my sons just had to hire a fire a sixty seven year old gentleman, and uh, he said, "Hans, he said, Dad, he's been in the company twenty years, and it was so painful, but I didn't hire him, so it wasn't as hard to." To have to let them go. The, the most disappointing thing is when you do all the work to recruit somebody and you just have such belief in them. You think you've done your homework. <laughs> Not long after they start working, uh-oh, you realize you made a mistake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and that gets into my, my new book, The Top Ten Ways to Be a Great Leader. Um, I use the acrostic of the word leadership for the ten chapters. And the E in leadership stands for emotional intelligence. EQ. Now, here's what I learned about hiring. EQ is more important than IQ, right? Right. Uh, in fact, we always, I always say uh, hire for attitude, train for skill. And uh, the people that I had to fire, high-level people that in our organization, C-level people, some of them, it was always because of EQ issues. Yeah. You know, they had horrible people skills. Or they, you know, they just were a disaster. People said, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells around this person. I never know when they're going to explode. And, you know, they don't get along with anybody and they don't treat us with respect. These are all the soft side of leadership. I think the most important side of leadership. Oh, absolutely. But now how for for people that might recognize this about themselves, do you have you worked with people to help them? get there to have a higher EQ? Cause I see, I mean, I will say that is, that is huge. What you're saying there. I've, I've seen that so often and um, it can really mess things up <laughs> if you handle certain yes. situations the, the wrong way with that um, lower EQ. But have you worked with, with people for those that are like, I, you know, I just get so upset or I just get so fired up. Um yeah, you're asking <laughs> the good old question, can people change? Yeah, exactly. I guess that's and, what I'm uh, asking. Fundamentally, no, people can't change uh, if they – now, I've seen people improve greatly in their emotional intelligence when they've been given uh, constructive feedback. Yeah. At the end of my EQ chapter, I talk about 
some exercises. And if you allow yourself to be, um, if you if you allow others to talk to you about your blind spots, you can grow. In fact, let me give you an example. I have a friend who's a CEO, and he just had this bad habit when he would go into a meeting uh, with his team. The first thing he would do is kind of give his conclusions on all the discussion items uh, instead of allowing, you know, natural debate. And then, you know, he just threw his weight around so much that people didn't even want to go to the meetings because it's like, well, you've already decided what we're going to do. Yeah. And he finally allowed them to give feedback and they told him, hey, you know, Henry, you're a total control freak. And and the way you run meetings is terrible. We don't feel like we have any input. And he completely changed. So that was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You can change. Yeah. And, uh, you know, often it's uh, it's those mistakes and what happens as a result of those that cause you to change. But you have to be willing to see it that way and to make the change. Yeah. You got to be vulnerable. And I love the topic of vulnerability. And I talk about that quite a bit in my new book because the power of vulnerability is is so that's how you grow. That's how you learn as a leader. And I think we love to follow leaders that are willing to grow, willing to learn, willing to listen and willing to admit they're wrong sometimes. Right. Yeah. Who are some of who have been some of your leaders? Just going to jump to that right now, just because I'm curious as we're talking about it. You mean people? I'm sorry, not led- leaders. Uh, yeah, who you've looked up to as um, as good role models of a leader? Oh well, uh, I don't want to get political, but I did like. Uh, it's almost like the characteristic. So, like one characteristic of leadership that's so important is vision. Mm-hmm. And uh, I liked the President Ronald Reagan just because. I'm not making a political statement, but I'm saying he he was a visionary and he helped take our country in a good direction because, you know, visionaries take people to places they would never go on their own and they paint a picture of the future that's very desirable. Right. Another person I met personally that had a huge impact on me was Mother Teresa. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a great story. In 1994, I went to my first trip to India. I've been all over the world, and I've I've been able to – I've had the privilege of traveling for my whole career all over the planet. But in 1994, I got a chance to go to Calcutta, India, and I had 10 minutes alone with her, uh, a private audience. It was just – she had just won the Nobel Prize a couple years earlier, world-famous. And and here's what impressed me about this woman – Because she didn't have, a lot of people think to be a great leader, you have to have charisma, you know, you have to be attractive, you have to be strong and powerful. But she was none of those things. She was less than five, I think maybe she was five feet tall. She was tiny and it wasn't attractive, very soft spoken. And yet she won the Nobel Prize for her passion And so she taught me about passion. You know, people who are passionate change the world. Uh, And so sometimes I interchange the word vision and passion. It's sort of the same thing. And Summer, guess what we talked about in the 10 minutes that I was with her? What? We didn't talk about her great accomplishments. We talked about me. You know, she wanted to talk about me, little old me. I was nobody, and that was an enormous lesson about, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and how you make them feel when you're around them. And she was one of those people that made you feel really important when you were in her personal space. Right. And to me, it's the power of humility. My last chapter in this book, Top Ten Ways to Be a Great Leader, is the P stands for the power of humility. And humility is an amazing uh, force. It's the opposite of what I call a top-down leader, an egotistical leader. It's all about me. Everybody's serving my needs. It's my agenda. You're going to help me get my way. But she was the opposite. She was just a very humble, gentle leader. That impressed me. Yeah. Well, so what are... So everyone will have, you know, a different way in terms of their personality, but what are more of those character traits 
of a strong leader. And I guess maybe, you know, what would be interesting too to talk about is what is it that the people that we are, you know, being led by, what is it that we look for or those people look for in us as leaders? Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm asking it it the right way. Okay. And one question that people always ask, it's the age old leadership question, are are leaders born or are they made? And the answer is both. (laughs) But you are born, but but I don't want people to think if I'm not born with certain characteristics, I can't be a great leader, you know, or if I don't have the right personality or charisma or whatever. So that's not true. I think you can learn to be a very effective leader. And so I don't, I say, don't use the excuse that I don't have what it takes. I don't have that leadership personality. I don't think there is a leadership personality because again, remember leadership is influence. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of companies and a lot of businesses and organizations, the most powerful leaders are not the, uh, actually appointed leaders or the identified leaders. Often the greatest influencers are other people. Yeah. Right. And people follow those other people. But, okay, some characteristics. When I ask an audience, I do a lot of speaking on leadership. When I ask people, I will get a tablet out and I'll say, tell me the characteristics of the kind of leader you love to follow that you respect. And, boy, you know, some are for just about every person in the room, it can be a different word. But themes emerge. And one, of course, is humility, respect. Um, another one is a listener, someone who's willing to learn, someone who's willing to admit when they're wrong. So there's lots of characteristics of great leadership. Those are some of the big ones. Uh, you know, by the way, the, to me, the most important word in a leader's vocabulary, the letter L in leadership stands for listen and learn. And if you don't listen, you can't learn. And the only way to learn is to listen. And when I ask audiences, have you ever worked for a miserable boss? And <laughs> guess what? Just about everybody raises their hand. And then I ask them, well, why? What made that boss so miserable? And time and time again, I hear this. They just don't listen. Yeah. And if they don't listen, that means it's all about the leader. And, and a leader that doesn't listen is not a good leader on all kinds of levels. You think about it, if it's a big company, uh, let's take airlines. I love Southwest Airlines. It's it, it's now my favorite airline. And the company culture is so empowering to the employees because they all own part of the company. And the friendliness and the attitude, the positive attitude of the people. But, okay, so the leadership needs to listen to the flight attendants and the gate agents and the pilots because they're the ones every single day that are rubbing shoulders with the customers, right? Right. And so whether you're in a service industry or a product, you got to listen to the people on the front lines. And that's great leadership. Oh, they take I input. so agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. I mean, those when you're not th- that those are really the people that are that are operating your business. And especially as you grow, they're seeing more of what's happening than you are when you're kind of at that at that top. You need to look at your your front line and listen. And I couldn't agree with that more. But there's there's some um, you know, mind, I guess mindset or men- that mentality out there that um, they want to keep their team scared of them. You know, I'm afraid to go to <laughs> yeah. my boss or to my, you know, owner of the company. I'm afraid because they're, they're going to get upset or they just have all this fear. And so they're, you know, like the exact opposite of feeling empowered. But those those type leaders, I don't know if I, you know, if I'm going to call them a leader, but you know who I mean, if yes. they believe that that works, well, that's how I keep them in check. And that's how I keep them doing what I want them to do. You know, <laughs> it just yeah, it's leadership by intimidation. Yeah. And sadly, there is a lot of that going. I have a very good friend out in California who just got fired. Uh, he was very effective, uh, but, but the top level leader was threatened by my friend because he was, he's a millennial kind of thinks outside the box. 
and wouldn't be intimidated. And all of a sudden he got fired. And and it was, I believe it was purely because of this not falling in line with this hundred percent devoted respect to the people at the top. Yeah, You never question the people at the top. There's a lot of that that's still going on. What are, what are some um, tips that you can recommend in terms of finding right people for your team and people to write hires? Yes. Uh, by the way, I have a bunch of podcasts on my website, HansPinzel.com. Oh, perfect. Several, several of my podcasts, I deal with the topic, how to hire stars, how to hire the right people. And, but let me just say that um, I learned through the years that EQ questions are so much more important than IQ questions. And so I would say that's, you know, do your homework, talk to people that have worked with this person and ask them about their, not their technical qualifications, how smart they are, how well they can do the task, but the people skills. How do they get along with people? How do they handle conflict? How do they act under pressure? You know, those are the soft questions. And sadly, Summer, you know, a lot of people won't even do references anymore. It's yeah, it, it's getting so difficult in the hiring process to find out about people. <laughs> yeah, I, and and you ask at the beginning of this podcast, what are some of the mistakes I made? One of the biggest mistakes I made in the last decade is I hired my number, you know, like the number two person in my a COO that was going to help me take a lot of the responsibility, run the place. And it was the worst hire I ever made. And this person turned against me, undermined my authority to the point where, and I realized he really just wanted my job. Uh, you know, he wanted uh, to, me to go so he could have my job. That was his entire intention when I hired him, but I didn't see it. I was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I blame myself that I'd, you know, what happens is we get enamored with people's personality and we want to see only the good stuff about this person. I got a lot of great feedback, but I should have dug harder because after he left and we he eventually quit, thankfully, before I had to fire him, then I started finding all this negative feedback about this person and how he never stuck around at a job for more than a year and just interesting. So the moral of the story is, dig as hard as you can to find out as much as you can. Right. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I, I believe that. Do you use any kind of um, other tools in terms of finding out, you know, or do you recommend any tools to finding out personality types and, and how they will they will work with you and how they will work? Is Because it almost seems like, you know, we're talking a lot about empowering people within their teams. Um and developing leaders you know, themselves. Uh, here's the thing that my HR department, they may not have been correct, but they told me you cannot use uh, personality tests, inventories in the hiring process. Oh, really? Have you ever heard that before? No, I have not. Yeah. That's what my HR people told me. They said, so I didn't. I wanted to, but they said, you can get in trouble if you, because I don't know why, but that's what they told me. So I, if it's, if it's legal by all, by all means, I, I love strengths finders. I love Myers Briggs disc test. Those things, if you can use them would be very helpful to see how people fit on your team. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had never heard that. Um, so interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> What are, um, can you give us a couple of the commandments of being a leader? Oh, are you referring to one of my Yes, my your books? book, The Top 10 Leadership Commandments. And by the oh, way, yeah. um, Hans has so many incredible books that are available. And again, you mentioned it earlier, but we'll have a link to it as well. It's HansFinzel.com. Um, H-A-N-S-F-I-N-Z-E-L.com. And we'll have a link to that. But you have so many fantastic books, The Power of Passion and Leadership, um, The Top 10 Mistakes Leaders Make, uh, The Top 10 Ways to Be a Great Leader. Um, and then you have the one I just mentioned, The Top 10 Leadership Commandments. Is that 
Does that work with the top 10 ways to be a great leader? Is that something? That's a totally different book. Okay. That book, that book I actually based on the, the life of Moses in the Old Testament of the Bible. Oh, wow. <laughs> One of the great leaders of history, and uh, I, what I did is I took ten of his, the characteristics of his life. I think he had the most difficult job of anybody, certainly in the Bible. And he he had a, because here's my leadership formula: leadership success is made up the leader and the follower in the situation. The leader who they are, the followers, who they are, and the situation, what it is. And if all three of those things line up well, you're going to have great success as a leader. But you can be a great leader and have lousy followers, you know, a lousy team. Yes, yes. I've worked with people like that. And they're going to be failures, not because of them, but because of the people they have. Yeah, that's true. And then the third factor is the situation, you know, Try to build a thriving new business in downtown Detroit. You know, there's a tough situation, a a city that's just been decimated by, you know, the changes in the automobile industry over the decades. And I know it's coming back, which is cool. So uh, I like Moses because he was, I think, a great leader, but had lousy followers. I mean, even God got so upset with the followers and then the tough situation taking them across the the desert to the promised land. So uh, one principle from that book is never give up. You know, I like the fact that he led those people for 40 years and sometimes you just have to have determination to get through. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we've learned so many great things today. So many uh, mistakes that we might be able to relate to. I know for one myself, and I've talked about this before on one of my podcasts is um, that uh, being a control freak in the beginning, I remember that feeling, you know, more, um, not so more, not so much in a mean way, but in a fear way of if I'm not controlling it, nobody else can. <laughs> nobody else yeah. Is gonna so do a that's job. a very good point because a lot of people are control freaks for very good intentions. They, they care so much that everything's done right. And it's uh, there are so many reasons why people don't delegate, and and one of it is is I just care so much it has to be done right. Uh, but you got to get over that if you're going to develop other people around you. You've got to allow, you know, unless it's brain surgery or they're building an airplane. <laughs> exactly. You know, give them some latitude and allow people to make mistakes. So that's really how you develop people. Exactly. And, and they, when they feel that confidence and they feel empowered, they're going to do better work. We all Absolutely. do better work when we're feeling confident. Yep. Um, so where, so is Hans Finzel the best place we can find more information if somebody would like to invite you to speak? Um, is that, is that the best place? Yep. That's the best place. Hansfinzel.com. Awesome. And, uh, best place to get your books and, and everything I assume. Yeah, and I've got a YouTube channel, and it's it's all there. I mean, if you go to YouTube and search for Hans Finzel, you'll find my channel. But I've got a lot of leadership videos on YouTube. But my my website's kind of the one stop shop for everything. A lot of podcasts on there. My ten books, etc. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Hans, for joining me today and sharing all of this genius on leaders. Oh, you're so welcome. It was great to meet you. And, you know, I just love if I can help a leader or a manager just improve their skill just a little bit, then I've had a good day. You know, that's what <laughs> that's what really satisfies me. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. OK, you're welcome. Thank you for listening to today's Get Genius. You can learn more about The Draw Shop at www.thedrawshop.com on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Your home for kick-butt custom whiteboard marketing videos. Your ideas come to life. Thanks for listening. Please share, comment, and make any suggestions for future genius guests.